everyone at Show Off I'm Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. We are finishing our school year with our ocean theme. We have about a week and a half left, which I just can't believe. And so we had our ocean theme last week and then we're gonna finish off the year with our ocean theme as well. But before I share a little bit about what we've been doing with our ocean theme, I thought I would share how it's going in the classroom because really we went back in person at the beginning of March and so right now it's like it's November if we had started in September, if that makes sense. So what I'm seeing right now is typical November behavior. And what's happened is the children are now feeling very, very comfortable. They're getting to know each other. And so that means we've had some extra challenges, but we, I've also seen some absolutely wonderful things happening as well. The challenges are what happens every year right around about a month and a half, two months after school starts, actually probably two, two and a half months after school starts, as the children start to get to know each other and feel more comfortable with each other, we start seeing a little bit more grabbing, maybe some hitting, we might have some sharing issues. One of the things I learned a long time ago, I don't even know where I read it, or it might have been a workshop I took, one of the things was to empower children to put their hand out and say, please stop. So by putting the arm out and the hand up like this is very powerful for a child. Please stop. They're not touching the child. It's just simply a gesture that they're showing. And then we teach the children that when somebody does that to them and says, please stop, they need to stop. And one example was we had a child who was pulling on somebody else's shirt. That child didn't like it and that child wanted to lash out. And I was there to redirect and say, tell him, please stop. And he did. So that's something we've been really, really working on this week is working on hitting and pushing because as I said, they're more comfortable. So they're starting to test things a little bit more and this happens year after year. The other thing is now that the children are more comfortable with each other, I'm starting to see them use the centers more. Now I hear a lot of teachers, especially with toddlers saying, they're not going over to the dramatic play area or they're not going over to this area or this area. So why should I have it if they're not going over there? Because it takes time. And this year is proof of that. Actually every year has been because just the other day, more than two months after we started school, I actually had all 10 of our children over in the dramatic play area and they were actually, they were acting out what they were doing. They were pretending that they were serving sushi to each other and so they had to use their vocabulary and they were talking as they were doing things. They had to work on sharing, which is always something we're working on with this age group. My point is, is that I was starting to think they're never in the dramatic play area ever. I set it up. They don't, they're not over there. It just takes time. So don't give up. It's going to take time and plus it helps also I've found that if I go over there and I sit with them as well, that kind of gets things started. So that's where we are and it's kind of crazy to say that we're now in that comfortable phase because we have to end in like a week and a half. But this is not a normal year. We already know that. So we're doing what we can do. So I wanted to share a little bit about what we did last week um, in our class with our ocean theme. The first thing we did was some bubble wrap fish. Just got a little piece of bubble wrap for each of them. And they took some tempera paint and they painted. And I had them have different colors and they painted the uh, bubble wrap. Some of the children were very precise and they wanted to paint all the little circles and other ones just simply just put it on. You can also roll it on, which I've done too. And then when they were finished, I had them press their fish onto the painted bubble wrap and then they had a print. And then if you want, you can then cut the fish out so that it looks like this. And you can kind of see it's just very simple. It's a little process art, but it's done in a fish shape. So it goes with our ocean theme. Another thing I did was I did a little sensory with some shaving cream and some blue watercolors and I squirted the shaving cream on a each child had their own tray 
I put just a few drops of the watercolor on top and then I gave them a little ocean animal that they could drag through the shaving cream to mix the blue and the shaving cream and then they got a nice little print that looks like the ocean. And then I also have this 10 fish are swimming in the ocean. This is another free printable that is on the website. And this was just an optional um, activity that we had out during uh, center's time. And they just took their dua dots and they were just kind of putting them on each of the 10 fish. And then over on our light table, this was a hit too, I had different color fish and then I had matching sorting bowls. And I didn't bring these out till later, had them start using their hands and they sorted the fish by color and they dropped them into the matching bowls. And then later I thought, you know, let's bring out the bug tongs. These are one of my favorite fine motor, motor tools and they could pick them up with that. And then of course we have our fish um, these are our little puppet sticks that I have and I showed these in my last video. These are a freebie that are on the website. And so what we did was I noticed the color of their shoes and or some, some kind of clothing and I said, who is wearing, who has orange on their shirt? And they would look and then I'd hand that child the orange fish. Who has red on their shoes? And they would look and then I'd hand the child that fish. And then after they all had their fish, then I was comparing who else has a, who has a yellow fish and they would find their friend that had the same color fish as well. So that was something that we did. And then we also all held these fish while we walked around the room with do, uh, dancing to some fish songs. So again, this is a freebie and it goes with this numbered, and I showed this in my last video, these numbered fish. But what some of the children did was they took this a step farther. Now in our sensory table, we have this magnetic, it's a fishing pole that goes with magnetic fish. But the children realized that if they took these off and they put them on the floor, that then they could pick the fish up. So I'm thinking this would be a really cute, if you happen to have one of these magnetic fishing poles, you can use the free printable counting fish and you could do this as a circle time activity and spread all the fish out and tell, ask each child to come and pick up a fish and then see what number it is. So that would be a real fun way to add some number recognition to your, your circle time or you can have this out during center's time as well. So I just wanted to point out that was something that one of the children discovered and that was a lot of fun. I love it when they take something I had, didn't even think to use it that way and they do it. So then what we're going to do is right now we have sushi in our dramatic play area because of the fish, but for our last couple of days I'm going to add some ice cream because I love to kick off our summer break having a pretend ice cream store in our dramatic play area and I, we try to do this every year because it goes so well with our beach day where the children come wearing their beach attire and they have their beach towels and we also have a popsicle party to celebrate our summer birthdays. And I actually really like this set. This is by Melissa and Doug and then the scoop fits onto the scooper, the ice cream that is, it sticks to the scooper with a little magnetic piece and then they can just put it on just like that. So this is a lot of fun and again, we'll, I'll be switching that out later next week. Another thing we're gonna do next week is we're gonna make our end of the year school gift. And this is something I started doing mm, three or four years ago. I take a class picture of the children and then I have them paint these unfinished frames. This one I got, I got these from Michaels. You can get these on Amazon too. In fact, I'll drop a link of the blog post where I show how we make these in the, on the resource page and also in the video description if you'd like to see. I shared this last week as well. So they get to decorate this with whatever colors they want. And then I put the class picture inside the frame. And then on the back, I put all of the children's names, our school and the year. And the reason why I do this as, as an end of year gift is because the parents say that it helps their children to remember their friends all summer because they will all be in the same class next year when they go into the three and four year old class. So this is something that we'll be working on as well. 
And then one other little fun activity is this little yellow collage. It's called What is Yellow? It's a sun, and then they're going to glue various yellow pieces on top. So this is something else that I like to do to go with the ice cream on our beach day and getting ready for summer break. So that's what we're going to be doing this next week. Make sure to be following Teaching Two and Three Year Olds on YouTube, subscribe, click on the bell icon so that as I am publishing more videos, throughout the summer, you will be notified. Thanks for watching.